All right, if you're one of those people who is struggling with patellofemoral pain symptoms, meaning you've got pain around the kneecap, maybe it's on the medial side of the kneecap, maybe it's underneath, maybe it's lateral, maybe it's even around the ITB, regardless. If you're struggling with this and you can't get over the hump of pain when you squat, bend your knee, run, that sort of thing, you're sort of past the acute phase, but you're struggling to actually strengthen it. You're struggling to get it rid of it and get the whole knee stronger. I've got four things I want you to work on. Patellofemoral pain, regardless of where it is, what the structure is, if it's the infrapatellar bursa, whether it's your patella tendon, whether it's your VMO insertion point, if it's your cartilage underneath, that's a problem, if it's your ITB, if it's bursa, the whole thing needs to be better in a single leg squat. Okay, so you're probably struggling with this, you're probably going, yeah, my single leg squat sucks. But So what I mean is from here, to there, you get pain, okay? So whether you're going downstairs, whether you're stepping up on something, anytime when you stand on one leg and have to do that, or weight bear, it hurts. Sometimes it might be the point where you go, you're fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. oh, there it is, okay? And you're struggling to do anything past that, then this is for you. Most of you people will find that squats are fine. You go, why can I squat like this, yet, I'm sore when I do one leg, all right? If that's you, well, it's because if this is a painful leg, this leg's supporting it, okay? You don't need any stability from the hips or the ankles to squat, okay? That means if that's you, your squat's fine and your single leg squat is terrible, then your, one of your biggest problems is stability around this kneecap, learning how to accept load on one leg. So I've got some tips for you. So if you're this person that goes, okay, I get to here and it hurts and I can't get past it. What you need to work on is stopping the knee going forward. So if I show you this way, stopping the knee going so far forward because that's painful. It's not working for you, but you still got to strengthen it. So what you need to do is increase how much hip work you do. We call this in the clinic a regression version. So all our exercises are got a standard way of doing it and then there's a regression version specifically for patellofemoral pain, okay? Now, from here, if I'm doing a squat and I want to get to there, okay, I've got to bend more here, right? I don't want to bend more there because it hurts, but I've still got to do more knee flexion. You can get more knee flexion without shoving your knee forward. What you do is you get it from sitting a bum back and you can see there's more knee flexion there, okay? Now, what that's going to do is shift weight out of my kneecap and put it into my hip or the load is going to come in here. You're going to feel this in your buttock more, which is hey, quite good for you because most knee problems that are patellofemoral like that are having hip issues, okay? And if your hip is weak, my bum's weak, then you're going to struggle with trying to strengthen this. So it's a good chance for you guys to work on hip so your knee can get better. So if I go this way, so you can see exactly what I'm doing, right? I want to do a step down, what we call a regression or single leg squat regression. So I'm going to go and try and go bend my knee and bend my hip like I normally do. When I'm just about to feel the pain, so I stop before the pain, then I sit backwards to complete the movement. I come back up to where the pain was about to go and then straighten my knee and hip together. So it's almost like I'm doing half the squat and then I'm tucking into a deadlift. Does that make sense? So you remember your deadlift is that, all bum, hardly any knee forward, but you can still see I'm bending at my knee. So I'm getting knee flexion, I'm getting strengthening work. So I do half a squat, stop before the pain, sit the bum back, come back up, finish the squat. Okay, and you might think, oh my God, this is that simple. It is that simple. But it takes quite a bit of balance and control for that, all right? So to be able to do that, you also got to make sure the knee doesn't roll in. And that's the other reason why people get pain is they, they let their knee roll in. So you've got to make sure that when you're doing this, you're not just thinking about the hip and stuff like that. You're making sure that their knee stays in line with the foot. Okay, so when I get to that point, I hinge backwards. I've still got to keep my pelvis level. And my knee from, you can see it's moving a little bit, that's okay because I'm balancing. I just don't want it doing that, all right? Doing that sometimes is why you're getting pain in the first place, okay? So that's not going to make your knee better. 
Okay, keeping a line is going to make your knee better and making sure you go through some strengthening work. Because I'm going to get, think of it this way, I need my quads, my patella tendon, my whole mechanism of that strengthening through range. If I go and just focus on pushing knee forward, hitting, hitting pain, I can't get the range. Okay, so I can get the range from stopping my knee, hinging at the knee and the hip more, there's my deadlift part, Come back up and then finish it with a squat. Okay, so if you can get that rule right, I want you to then apply it to other stuff. So we then do a regression with a ball squat. So this one is going to take the balance factor out of things, right? So if I'm now going here, and this will be a good way for you to see what's happening with the knee. If I do a ball squat, my standard favorites, okay, you're going to stand on one leg. And the other one, right? Now, because I'm holding, I'm held up by the ball, I don't have to worry about the balance so much. To focus on, okay, I can really sit the knee forward. You can see that knee coming forward now. And say, let's pretend my pain or your pain sits about there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come to that point just before the pain, then hinge backwards, come up, and then complete the movement again. All right, so let's try that again. So pushing my knee into the ball, which gives me, uh, that's going to light me up in my glute med. If you've seen my other one leg ball squat videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. Holding it there, keeping my pelvis level, slowly come forward, which is strengthening up the tendon here, my quads, the whole kneecap mechanism. Stop before the pain. Hinge down, so I get more and more and more knee flexion, more loading, no pain. And then come back up and straighten, right? So same sort of drill. Those two exercises are really good, not only for your knee pain, but for runners as well. So I would always put that stuff in patellofemoral pain. No matter, almost no matter who it is that comes in, those two are in there. Now, if you succeed with that and you go, yes, but my squat sucks and my lunge sucks. If your lunge sucks, this is what you do for that. Same drill. You're going to think, apply the same principles normally with the lunge you're going to go well my lunges you go down and forward so i'm leaning forward loading up the front leg you can see how far forward my knees over my toes knees over toes right great all right i want my knee going over my toe i also want it i want it in line with my foot i don't want it doing that okay but if you've got patellofemoral pain you can't do your knee fought over your toes because it hurts, right? So you get to here and you're going, oh, that hurts. So same rule, stop before the pain, increase the hip. So I'm gonna go down and forward, where that pain is, I'm gonna drop by doing that. So that knee is not coming any further forward. And I push back up and then return it. All right, keep your balance. So I'll show you that again. Imagine where the pain is, bend both knees, it's coming, stop before the pain, drop down, push back up. Now, the trick is when you drop down, is trying not to put more weight on the back leg and loading up that patellofemoral joint. All right? So when you're doing this, make sure you've got a long enough stance to the back. If your stance is too short, you're going to load the back knee too much. So keep that stance really long. So when you drop down and you have to stop, you can lean forward over that knee and still keep the weight out of this one and keep it loaded into here. All right? I want my weight down through my heel. So when I drive up, I'm pushing my heel down, which gets me here, okay? Stops me loading that patella femoral joint so much, all right? So lunges, if they suck, give that a shot and see how that goes. So if you've got those three going all right and you'll notice that, you know, that helps you do the movement without as much pain, but you're still fine because you're not getting an ego forward, you're not getting much quads. So what I want you to do is then do some extensions with a band, but try and do them eccentrically, okay? So if you've got a band like this, and this could be whacked around you know, weights gym, it could be tied around your chair at home. You could do that leg extension machine. Doesn't matter. 
what you want to work on is doing this to start with pain free okay some of you might go yeah my single leg squat sucks my lunge sucks and when I do leg extensions that hurts too okay so what i want you to try and work on is just doing the down phase this is especially important for people who's got the patella tendon or the quads tendon tendinopathy or tendonitis and through there you'll find that that's quite painful to try and do that movement or if you've got cartilage damage underneath there that might be painful so what you want to try and take out is the concentric movement load and just do the eccentric movement load and only work on the range that doesn't hurt so much okay so if you find that the range from here to there is a pain-free range and that's sore you just work on this range to start with but you do it with assistance from the other leg okay so from here i'm going to hold on and i'm going to push that out to there okay because I know that from there to there, it's sore. So I'm going to hold that there, and then take my foot away, and lower it back. Now you might think this is real low-level stuff, but you've got to—you can't even do the leg extensions. You've got to start somewhere and build that strength up so you can eventually graduate to a normal leg extension. So don't be afraid to do the real light load, easy stuff, so you can progress along. So if that's your range, right? Okay, from there to there, that's going to work for you. If your pain is from here to here, but not from there to there, what you can do is start there, okay? Push that out, hold it, lower down, hit the floor, okay? From here, push that out, hold it, lower down. Now you notice that's going to work on strengthening this mechanism. It's not going to work on your quads, okay? So your VMO here is going to fire up a bit more. So that's a really nice one to do, especially for those people who may just have patellofemoral pain because their quad's so weak. Maybe you've had a previous injury, this quad has withered away, you need to start strengthening it. But you've got to do it pain-free, otherwise you won't get anywhere. Right? But if you're one of those people that it's just sore when you do single leg, then just work on the full range, try to get the back here, push it all the way out, hold it, let it go all the way in. Okay? So there's my last one. So think of those three plus this one are your essentials to get right when you've got patellofemoral pain. Try and use that regression idea that we've got to give you that segue into doing them normally and that's when you're going to get the real strengthening. And then this is just a sort of an intermediate step for those of you who are struggling to get you doing normal strengthening to get rid of the whole problem totally. All right, see you go with that and see you next time.